Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to look at a work example from topic two, business transactions. And in this particular video, we'll look at taking a set of transactions and putting them in the worksheet. Before getting into it, uh, it's good to have a look at transaction analysis and just understand what we're trying to do here. Uh, so in these particular steps, uh, we're going to get a transaction. We have to read the transaction. Uh, we have to identify, secondly, what the cash effect is. Um, for a lot of these transactions, the cash effect is going to be fairly simple. Um, but again, as you move on you know, and further in your accounting journey, you may find that um, it's not always as straightforward. Thirdly, you need to figure out which accounts are affected. Um, so there's going to be at least two, potentially depending on the transaction, could be more than that. And then finally, just checking that everything balances out um, and you haven't got any sort of major errors sitting in there. Hopefully not any minor errors e either. So what I've got set up here is a set of transactions um, that we have for the example that we're using. Um, so if you've got the text, this is just a set of transactions they have in there in the work example um, for the topic. And we've got a series of dates and I'll just scroll down. and various transactions which are taking place. And what we've got set up in the worksheet here, so this is already pre-populated, depending on what you need to do, you may have to create these as you go along. Uh, we've got eight accounts. We've got four asset accounts. We have two liability accounts and we have two equity accounts. Um, so remembering from the accounting equation, the asset side has to equal liabilities plus equity. So as we go through, as we enter into these enter these transactions in into the worksheet, we have to make sure that whatever we do, the, the total on the left hand side uh, is equal to the total on the right hand side. So turning to the first one, Nicholas contributed twenty thousand dollars cash into the business bank account. So we're assuming this is the owner. Uh, so they provided $20,000 cash. So cash goes up by $20,000. And if we move along, this is a capital injection. So capital increases by 20,000. And we have the left side balancing with the right. The second transaction is the business purchased an iPad for $500 cash from JB Tech Supplies. Um, Again, it's being purchased for cash, so the easy one, and often that's gonna be something you can kind of deal with straight off, is if cash is moving in or out, you can usually be assured you've got something going along there. So cash has gone out, so there is a reduction in that cash asset of $500, and you've now got a non-current asset. So you've got something that you can use for an extended period of time, well, hopefully if you don't break it in the meantime. So that will be equipment. Um, so again, it's an asset, you're going to get a benefit from it, and you currently control it. The business sent an invoice to Tennis Queensland for services rendered of $3,000. So in this particular case, they've obviously done some work. Uh, they have not yet been paid for it, but they will be paid for it. But they do have a benefit uh, in that Tennis Queensland do owe them money. So we have an account receivable. And that indicates that Tennis Queensland um, have to pay them you know, at some point in time in the future. Now, we're just for the sake of simplicity here, we're not separating out lots of different revenue and expense items here. We're just putting them straight into profit or loss. Um, obviously, you in a, in a real situation, you would have all the various different revenue accounts and different expense accounts. Um, we're just keeping them all in profit and loss just for simplicity here at the moment. So that would be revenue coming in or income and you would show that as a positive effect on profit and loss and again we've still got the left hand side equaling the right hand side the business banked cash received from coaching services of ten thousand dollars we've actually got some cash for this so cash goes up ten thousand dollars and we've done some work in this case so we can show a similar thing as above so if we take these two together, they both have the same effect on profit or loss. They both have a positive effect on assets. One is an account receivable because you don't have the cash. The second is actually showing an increase in cash. Uh, 
but the net effect on the balance sheet is much the same. The business paid rent of $1,000. We have a $1,000 going out. So $1,000 cash going out. Now for what we're doing here, obviously as you extend beyond in, in, in accounting and start talking more about accrual accounting, then we'd see slightly different things going on. But for the purpose of what we've got here, that rent is an expense. Um, so you're getting use of something. Um, it's been part of kind of, you know, it's a depletion of assets in order to run your business because uh, you don't have that cash anymore. So you see an expense of $1,000 for that rent. On September 8th, uh, the business negotiated with a contractor, Alan Pfaff, to perform 80 hours of work over the next two weeks for the Indurapilly Tennis Club. I'm glad I, sp I think I spelled that correctly. There's lots of, lots of O's and L's in there. Um, this is obviously something important for the business, um, but at this stage, there is no transaction. There's no... There's no accounting transaction that's taken place, but there will, will likely be in the future. So nothing happens. The business banked checks received from DT Tennis for coaching services provided a $5,000. Now they bank those checks, so they're receiving cash. Um, again, you know, the exact timing of how, I mean, I don't know that many businesses that use checks anymore. Um, it's pretty rare to see them, but they do still exist. But that is ultimately going to be cash coming into the business. And they have performed the services to receive those checks. So that is profit or loss of $5,000. Scroll down a little bit. The business paid salaries to part-time staff, uh, one to A. Rafter and, and one L. Pratt of $2,200. Again, they have paid their staff. So it's $2,200 negative. So that's cash going out of the business. And that's an expense item for wages or salaries, wages or salaries. It's pretty much for our purposes, uh, they're one and the same. On the 12th of September, the business paid $1,800 to Dixon Brothers for office furniture. Again, they've paid that $1,800. So we have $1,800 going out and we do have an office furniture account. So we have an asset going up. So you can see along this transaction, there are no liability or equity effects. So there's nothing on the right hand side. All we've effectively done is to replace one asset with another. On the 14th of September, the business paid $450 for electricity. So they paid it. So $450 goes out and it's a $450 expense because again, they've got a depletion in an asset and they've used that in order to sort of run their business and that is gonna lead to a decline in equity in the business. A few more transactions. So the business invoiced TJB $3,800 for coaching services. So again, it looks like the services have been provided based on the information at hand. Um, they have not yet been paid. So $3,800 to accounts receivable and $3,800 to profit or loss. The business paid mobile phone charges are $280. That, that paid is a pretty good indication that obviously money has gone out of the business and it's a mobile phone expense. The business paid $2,000 to Russell Solutions for website development. Now, we have the $2,000. Um, in this particular example, for, for what we're doing, uh, it is a website development cost and we're, we're counting that as an expense. There could well be arguments made and you see this a little bit with certain sort of IT infrastructure and, and, and you know, software and whatnot, there could be arguments made, is that going to be some sort of asset for the business? Depends on, you know, is that going to be an economic benefit? Um, that's probably beyond the scope of what we're looking at right at this point in time. Um, but what I'll just sort of point out to show why this is important around identifying the transactions and identifying the accounts involved. 
is because the way we've got this set up at the moment is we have a reduction in an asset here and we have a reduction in, I suppose you have an expense, so we've got a reduction in profit. If, and I'm not saying this is the way, way it's done here, but if that was some sort of asset, now, because I don't have an extra column, I, I won't create one, but for argument, we'll just create an asset here. If we did that, the net assets don't go down and profit doesn't go down. So by simply changing that from some sort of an expense to some sort of asset, you make your profit and loss look better and you make your balance sheet look better. So it is really important that you get these transactions identified in the right place, but also to understand why companies have the incentive. Um, well, they have the incentive to potentially misreport, but also the means by which they could do so. On the 19th of September, Nicholas purchased a digital camera for home use of $300 from Dr. Cameras using his personal credit card. This is nothing to do with the business. This is Nicholas. He's doing it for home use. He's using his personal credit card. It has no relation to the business whatsoever. Um, so we leave that be. On the home straight. The business bought an office desk on credit from Office R Us for $1,400. So we have office furniture of $1,400. And we have an account payable of $1,400. So we've effectively borrowed money. We have an asset. The left-hand side goes up. The right-hand side goes up. Everything still balances. On the 21st of September, the business banked $500 for coaching services provided to Ironside Primary School. They banked it and they provided the services. So that goes into profit or loss. Again, everything balances. On the 25th of September, the business bought a new computer server for $6,000 from JB Tech Supplies for cash. So cash goes down by $6,000 and we have office equipment of $6,000. So everything's on the left-hand side. We simply have replaced one asset with another asset. The right-hand side doesn't get touched. And finally, the business took out a bank loan to purchase equipment with Welcome Bank for $50,000 to be repaid in five years. So they have $50,000 more cash and they have a debt, so a liability of $50,000. Now what I've set up here at the bottom is just a total. So cash ends up with 71,270, accounts receivable 6,800, office furniture 3,200, office equipment 6,500, accounts payable 14, loan 50,000, capital 20, and profit or loss 20,370. Okay, and now that we've got to the end, we just check these all add up. And we have 87,770 and we have, just add these up, 91,770. Hmm, well, that's not good. And this is a really good indication of the fourth part of the transaction analysis, which is checking that the equations balance because something is obviously wrong here. Now the difference, there's a couple of different ways and we talked in the main set of, you know, the main video around kind of some of the ways in which you can check this. The difference is $4,000. Now there's a couple of ways this could, this could happen. And one of it could be, have we not signed it correctly? So half of 4,000 is two. And if we scroll up again, this, if we were to check on an individual basis, this doesn't work. We've got negative 2,000 here, but we have positive 2,000 here, which you know is not right. That one line, if we were to have an individual kind of um, balance check, wouldn't work. So we would have actually been picked up back at the time. And that's because I was messing around with you know what happens with if we classify this as an asset, not an expense. So if we fix this up, we end up with 
87,770 on both sides. Now, that doesn't guarantee that what you've done in here is correct. Um, you could have made an equal, or I could have made an equal um, error on both sides. Um, I, could have I could have accounted for something as an asset when it should have been an expense. There's a variety of ways this could be wrong, but at least we know we've clarified at least one set of errors, which are sort of either transposition errors or if we've got something signed the wrong way. Um, so that is taking a set of transactions and putting it into the worksheet.